Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And I, I, you know, for those watching the live stream, I'm going to keep it up unedited and stuff. Uh, but I wanted to uh, do a small edit version of this. So today we are going to, uh, and if you hear heavy breathing in the background, it's just my dog Ace, who just got his ears clean. So yeah, so five years ago, I started this Venom Vlog because I like Tom Hardy. And that's just the short answer. The first episode, I watched a reaction of video of him working out to becoming Venom. And then uh, you know, two, a year and a half later or whatever, I'm meeting the guy face to face and watching the movie with him and then seeing him again on the set of Let There Be Carnage. And I never would have guessed where this show would have taken me personally, as far as personal growth, uh, learning to kind of listen more. Uh, that was my main thing was, uh, you know, I, I, I like doing live streams and stuff, but I really putting in the work of pre-recorded um, videos. I just, I started really getting into the routine of that. So before I get into my list, happy fifth anniversary, Georgie says, hello, thank you, Georgie. Appreciate it. Lance says, congrats on five years. Thank you. And again, you know, five years is because of the community we built here and the, the amount of Venom fans that came to this channel. So I thank you for that. Like, I, like honestly, I, I'm, I'm sure on some capacity because I got into the routine, I would probably still make stuff on YouTube um, on some level, but I don't know if I'd be as die hard about it. I don't know if I would have pumped out nearly 750 episodes in five years. <laughs> I was trying to hit 750 before, um, a couple days ago, November 5th was when, uh, of 2017 is when I uploaded my first Venom vlog episode. And I was trying to get a bunch of episodes done before then, but I just, with everything going on with me health wise, I, I can't do it. We've gone through most of the history of Venom in comic books. Like I said, now we're doing the current stuff. And as Andrew pointed out, he's interested in people's opinions of the current stuff. So if you have those opinions, you know, let it be known down below. But also let us know if you're watching this later and those who are watching now, and I'll read them out in the comments uh, on, the, on the chat here, your favorite Venom runs. Like, do you have one favorite, two favorites? You know, uh, give me like one or two of your favorite Venom runs that you've enjoyed just throughout the history of Venom, whether it's his time in the Amazing Spider-Man comics with David McLeany, if it was Lethal Protector specifically, or Planet of the Symbiotes. Bless you, Ace. Um, <laughs> Ace is not a fan of Planet of the Symbiotes. Bless you, bud. Um, may I continue? Okay, good. We also have Agent Venom. Um, Mike Costa's run was a, was a recent one. Donny Cates' run. I know a lot of people are fans of that run. Um, the 90s stuff, like, you know, I would say for me, I like a lot of the 90s stuff. They're goofy, but uh, I think that's what makes it work is that it is kind of goofy and it kind of gives Eddie a personality. He's kind of a goofball um, on some level, you know. Um, he is serious, but maybe like too dramatically serious at times too. But I, there's a lot of cool characteristics that we learned about Eddie, I feel, on this show when reviewing the 90s books, um, like Enemy Within... Uh, you know, and then like a funeral pyre and things like that. Seeing Eddie Venom working side by side with other characters in the Marvel Universe showed us a lot about him. Andrew says, Planet Symbiotes is good from a potential lore standpoint. Very true. Even if it felt light compared to now, I like the Lethal Protector run. Eddie sort of just derping around, attempting to be a hero. Agreed. Like I said, you find out a lot about these characters. And whether you like the stories or not on some level, there is character stuff in almost every version of uh, these miniseries that were in the 90s, uh, like Lethal Protector, like Planet Symbiotes. You may not like the story overall, but it told you a lot about Clintar and how they interact, uh, or the, the Silver Surfer Carnage connection. Uh, when they did that two issues in Amazing Spider-Man, we learned a lot about uh, Clintar and how there was a, a planet that the Clintar race consumed and took over that Silver Surfer fed the Galactus. <laughs> like, that's just cool lore stuff that is just, uh, that's that's great that they put it in there. So now that we've talked about favorite Venom runs, and those of you who are watching later, feel free to let yours known uh, down below. But favorite Venom merchandise, and we can be vague if you have a specific piece of merch, um, like something like this I really love. Uh, I kept it here just in case. I know it used to be hung up on the wall in the background, but I just don't have any space for it right now. But this was gifted to me when I worked at the Lego store by a, a young man who came in and shopped there and found out I was a big Venom fan and found out I had this YouTube channel and he gifted that to me. And so I ended up gifting him something in return um, because I just felt guilty. I was like, this is this is awesome. I think I gave him a, a Spider-Man poster that was like the Spider-Verse. It had like, it was um, by Gabrielle Del Otto, I think, did the art. And it's just like a hundred Spider-Men on like this 10 or eight foot poster. So, uh, so that was cool. So we traded. Um, 
but it still was like i love this thing and that was made for like a birthday decoration and i think um rns had one on their stream it was uh like the one where eddie and venom is like crawling through like a, a hole in the wall um with like planks around it uh so that was cool so that you know that i know is um like those birthday decorations i think are awesome they make they definitely spruce up the house that's for sure um and uh and then also uh toys you know like the toys i love like i'm glad we finally got a venom movie figure uh been a bit you know really happy to see that when that was released and, and announced too um hopefully we'll get a carnage one at some point and a shriek a movie version of shriek um but i don't know we'll see uh hasbro uh hasn't been winning me over lately with some of their marvel legend stuff and personally and the way they do things i'm not a big fan of some of their business practices and then shirts you know i'm actually wearing a venom shirt right now with scotty young art on it and uh ace it has a venom blanket on his on the bed you know so uh that i actually got for echo um and then you know, now ace has it and he rolls up in it sometimes so uh yeah so i mean there's so much so what are some of the merch stuff that you've liked yeah doggy yeah he's here uh so venom body pillow review win <laughs> I, I don't have a venom body pillow uh i'm sure they make that stuff i haven't gone down there's some rabbit holes i don't really go down i know they exist because i'm not i'm not like an idiot i'm aware of the internet and and kind of people in general and and stuff uh and but and i know when i went to like megacon i think this year and last year and comic-con before i've seen body pillows you know because people try to sell them uh but yeah so i know what stuff is but i i there's some rabbit holes i just don't go down <laughs> so uh but yeah i love the sarcasm that's, that's good georgie man the merch like exploded we got so much venom stuff and to the point where there's not enough like there's like they, they start venomizing marvel characters so like here's a venom iron man and here's a venom captain america and here's a figure of it and a funko pop of it and it's like they really just put that stuff on everything venom lunch boxes venom this and honestly if it wasn't for the success of that first movie and uh you know i'm sure the venom cartoon with the maximum venom i'm sure that would have still happened in some capacity regardless because that was in development i think before too but still like uh just the merch and the expansion of it and just showing that venom is a household name that's i think led to a lot of this which is great so i'm very grateful <laughs> very grateful we got a lot of venom stuff because it helped me make content for the show on the stuff that i could afford at least <laughs> there's so much venom stuff out there that I, I'll never make videos on because I just can't afford it all. Um, but hopefully I at least mentioned them in in some video, like statues and stuff. Uh, that Venom Marvel movie figure was great. I do agree that Marvel Legends Venom figure was awesome. But yeah, so yeah, so if you have any, if you're watching this later on and you have any merch stuff that you want to mention, let me know down in the comments and we'll continue talking down there about Venom merch. Um, all right, so let's talk about costumes real quick because I'm not going to take a lot of time on this. But because of the movie these are definitely because of the movie i know there's always been venom cosplay that's not what i'm talking about there's some really good venom just straight up venom cosplay everything from stitching sewing um adding different fabrics to make the symbiote looking a certain way um the way they paint it uh and the type of paint they use 3d printing masks masks that have jaws that move masks that don't there's so many different cool venom styles that of cosplay um agent venom you know anti-venom there's been a there's been a lot and a lot of cool ones but what I like from the movie is these people that have made ones where they're wearing regular clothes or they're dressed as something else, like a different character, and they're being taken over by Venom. So, like, I've seen when the movie was coming out, there was that guy in the gray hoodie who had his hands in the hoodie in the pouch, um, but it wasn't his real hand. His real hand was actually through a hole in the sweater, and it was puppeting a Venom mouth on him. And so it looked like his hands were like he was walking around with his hands in his uh, hoodie and he could take his left hand out and use that. But the right hand was puppeting the, the venom uh, head that was talking to him. That is straight pulled from the movie uh, and which is awesome. And then recently I saw this kid on Instagram who I think his mom shared the video uh, where it's him dressed as Spider-Man for Halloween. But he put his arm through the, the sleeve of the Spider-Man arm and put the you know other arm in his pocket. Um, so it looks like Spider-Man has his hand in his pocket. But then like Venom, the head is like attached to him and trying to take him over. And he, they even painted little Venom strands on his face so that he, it looks like he was being taken by Venom. And he's like in a Spider-Man costume. And it's like, those things are really cool. I just, every time I see someone dressed with something like that, I flip out and just think it's the coolest thing. Cause I'm like, that's great. It's, it's just a cool like trick on the eye, but also like you figure it out in two seconds of what's really going on. But 
it just looks cool. When you first see it, it takes you off guard. You're like, whoa, what's what's happening? Um, so everyone from like grownups to little kids are doing these cool Venom cosplays. And it's just, it's fun to see. And it, and I would say that's a direct result from the movie, which is because they're kind of doing what Eddie did in the movie where the symbiote was coming out and coming around and talking to him. So yeah, really cool. Really just really neat stuff. I, I, I love it. I love seeing it. While the movie itself wasn't great, it did give us costumes and ideas for Venom cosplay. For sure. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like it, the, the the kind of the atom bomb of creativity that went off after that movie and the merch and the you know and the inspirations it did for people um i mean even how they marketed that movie like uh, some of my favorite marketing for the movie is uh and so this is a side thing so it's, i don't really have a category for this but i love what they did in china I, unfortunately the second movie didn't come out in china so it, it didn't make as much money as it probably could have i'm thinking the second movie could have made another 100 150 million in china and it would have been put up there around maybe like the seven hundred million dollar marker, which is still really good because the movie only cost an extra only, but it was an extra twenty million, I think, the budget for the second movie. So they didn't double the budget. They didn't go crazy. They used that money they made to fund Morbius and some of these other movies, Madam Web and stuff, and then Venom too. So that's what you're supposed to do in these situations. You make a movie for as little as possible. It makes almost a billion dollars. You take that profit and you put it into other projects. Um, but the way they marketed that movie in China, the first one, where it was like Venom's a good boyfriend, and he's like carrying college girls' books to their class for them and, and helping them at their locker, just, I mean, genius, <laughs> because that movie made like almost two hundred million dollars, I think, in in China, the first one. So yeah, really good marketing strategy. I mean, just really interesting. Uh, but watching the marketing for the first movie was really neat. The second one, I felt like they did more cookie cutter. I think is because of COVID and stuff. So they like took over a building in Dubai and it's like a lot of movies seem to be doing that. Um, and then like, you know, not really Times Square, that was more Black Adams thing, but they just do like that that kind of promotion. And I felt like it, the promotion for the first movie was just really creative in other countries, like big time. Have we talked about Venom memes? What are some of your favorite Venom memes? Uh, because the Venom memes, especially since, I mean, there's always been good ones. One of my favorites is always the, the honking the truck horn from the 90s animated series. I always love that. When I was on Twitter, I would use that a lot and people would use it towards me, you know, trying to get someone's attention. Like if I retweeted some like an article and I'd be like, honk, honk, you know, I'd have that that meme up there. Um, you know, I, I liked uh, when the movie came out and they had the split poster. It was like Venom's face and Tom's face. And it was kind of a bad Photoshop, to be honest with you. I saw people comparing it to the Tobey Maguire one from the first Spider-Man movie where it was like half Spider-Man's face and half Tobey. And it was also badly uh, photoshopped, even for its time. Um, but the Venom one definitely for its time was kind of badly photoshopped. But people were comparing it and it like they were showing like Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3 going like, I was looking through some old photos and I saw something familiar. Like when he was calling Eddie Brock out in Spider-Man 3 for stealing his photos. So uh, there was stuff like that, like those kind of memes comparing the two posters I thought were fun. And then when the movie came out and they showed that first trailer where we saw Venom and he was like, his you know mouth came down and his tongue came out and he licked the guy's face. Uh, they started doing that uh, scene from, uh, was it Scary Movie? Uh, based on the commercials from the 90s where they were like, what's that? <laughs> and they did Venom with that. Those always made me laugh every time. I could have the worst day ever. And if I saw someone send me a was up Venom or the poster comparison or the truck horn honking, that stuff made me laugh. So if you have any um, favorite Venom memes, you know, let me know down in the comments or here if you're in the chat and I'll read them out. Because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good ones out there. And I know I haven't dove fully into meme stuff uh, with Venom, but some of them I have. When I was on Twitter, I would share them. Um, but I never sought them out. It would just be something that floated up in my stream. Um, so, uh, so I'm sure some of you guys probably know some good ones. The 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 trunk junking venom, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. There's a trailer edit that mashes venom and flubber together. That I've seen. That is very funny. Uh, I have seen that actually. I think one of you guys sent that to me uh, back when that was out there. So we got the venom memes down. Uh, so let's talk about the live action elements since because I know you guys have been talking about that in the stream already. What are some of your favorite elements from the live action movies? Now I, I'm not saying what movie is your favorite or anything like that. I know these movies are a little divisive. There are people that like them. There's some people that love them. Uh, and then there's a lot of people that don't like them uh, or hate it. So, but there's, it, I'm wondering if there's just something in the movies. Like me, like earlier, I said the goofiness of Eddie and Venom, Tom jumping in the tank and eating the lobster, like that kind of commitment to the role, that stuff makes me laugh. And it makes me appreciate that 
he appreciates the character and he's not just doing like a bland phoned in performance. Um, Cause I, I like Jared Leto. He was okay as Morbius, but I felt like some of it, he was just like, let's be stoic and let's just be serious about things. And he, and then th- that when he had humor, it fell off cause it, cause it wasn't consistent. And so for me, I'm kind of like, eh, that, that's where I, I find characters boring when they're just flat and deliver lines. So I liked the, in the element of that. Uh, I also though, even though it's a different take on Venom for sure, I thought Topher also committed to his version of Eddie. He showed a range of emotion. He would get, when he was angry, his eyes would water. So he would be like sad, angry, you know, like you ruined my life kind of thing. And he would portray that really well in some of those scenes. And then he would get creepy, you know, cause he was a creepy guy. He was hitting on Gwen and she's like, we went on one date for coffee. And he's like, but you're my girlfriend. And it's like that kind of mentality of, of attachment and weirdness played out later when he had the symbiote. And he was like, my spider sense is tingling when he's looking at Mary Jane, you know, and he's like being a total creep about it. There is moments like that where the characters commit to their craft and commit to the bringing something new to the character that I really loved. So those are elements of the live action movies that I liked. So let me know some that, that you liked um, from the movies uh tevia says honestly the one thing i liked from the movie was tom hardy and venom's dynamic because it was tons of fun agreed the relationship between eddie and venom in the new movies i loved pieces that was i thought that was some of the best stuff i to me that was the most comic accurate and even and it's weird because it's not 100 percent comic accurate they're not really treated as the odd couple in the comics but for a live action interpretation of them i felt that was a great interpretation of those characters um and it felt true to the spirit of the comic books. So that's what I liked a lot about him. Andrew says, I honestly love Dan. Oh, Dan, he's so good. I like Dan too. Uh, that good call. A genuinely nice guy who outright refutes the new boyfriend of the now former love interest, a secretly horrible trope. He really does. He goes against trope uh, for sure and cliche. He's like, you know what? No, I'm a good guy. And I actually like Eddie. He's like a fan of Eddie's show. And I thought that made the dynamic even better because you... You, on some level, you're like, oh, I want Eddie to be happy. And if he wants Anne, maybe that will make him happy. But we, we're, they establish in the movies and in the comics, Eddie doesn't always know what he wants, which is very real. I connect to that very much so. Um, Eddie doesn't always know what's best for him. So he thinks being in love with Anne and her being with them is the, is, would be the best thing for him. But would that be the best thing for Anne? I mean, she has a great guy who, is treating her well i mean it's so it's like it's it's tough but it it makes you really look at the characters which i i like a lot you know um so yeah who knows and maybe Anne will always have a thing for eddie but she seems to have moved on you know and and eddie has to accept that and that's part of his journey in the second movie even if they handled it not too well um that is still part of his journey so yeah it's cool i like that you brought up dan all right, Andrew says, I don't like Spider-Man 3's Venom, but like now that you bring it up, yeah, do genuinely put everything on the table. So not the right actor, but not for lack of trying. You know, and it's funny because if you see interviews with Topher Grace, he says he's a huge fan of Venom. And when he auditioned for the role, he was like, well, I'm not going to get it because I don't look anything like Venom. I'm not big. I'm not muscular. And uh, and then when he got picked, he was like, are you sure you got the right guy? So that's, I mean, think about that for a second. Like he got a role which most actors just that's what they do they, they need to act they get they, they want the next role they want to you know line up deals he was an actor on tv getting into movies now and so he's like he and even he was like are you sure you got the right guy so that just to me that speaks about his class you know level uh, uh, and also when tom hardy got the role he put out like a really cool tweet about tom hardy he was like dude i cannot wait to watch tom hardy play venom he's like what a great choice for the character and I'm like, how classy is that? Even, and that's the thing is I know sometimes people go, well, he didn't mean that. He's just doing that, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you don't look how easy it is for people on the Internet to be jerks to each other. And so, like, he was nice. He was like a class act about it. I thought that was really cool. It says a lot about him. But I like Topher Grace as an actor. And, and, and uh, I think there are some elements in his Venom where I'm like, OK, the interpretation of the character is very wrong. But for the interpretation we got, he played that version he committed to it. And I, I appreciated that. I was like, wow, that's because when you're angry, that point when you're so upset at someone that you're crying, but you're just showing rage. And for him to capture that on screen, I was like, okay, that's that one moment is, is worth noting for sure of things that I like about this movie. 
All right, so Georgie's phone is dying. He says, my phone's about to die, so I'll say this quick. Favorite spider, uh, fi uh, favorite Venom in a video game. Let's jump to that, because we talked about the cartoons. Let's jump into the favorite Venom in a video game, and we'll start with Georgie's comment, uh, and then I'll tell you mine. He says, uh, two-way tie between PS1 Venom and Ultimate Venom, and third place would be Web of Shadows. The rest is all over the place to him. Very good. Great segue, too. Thank you so much. And those of you who are watching later on, let your favorite Venom in cartoon be known down below, and let us know who your favorite Venom is in a video game. Um, I also wrote down PS1 Spidey. That is also one of my favorites. I liked him in Ultimate Spider-Man as well, even though I'm not a fan of the Ultimate Universe version of Eddie and Venom. The video game was so much fun to run around and absorb people and things. Such a blast. I had a great time playing that game. Um, but I also kind of liked Venom in Friend or Foe. Uh, he's kind of goofy, just in your face. But it was fun playing as him and Prowler as a team and running around um, as a team together it was a lot of fun for me personally to get those two characters working side by side in a video game. Thought something I thought I would never have. And so that game, I kind of like that version of Eddie too, or Venom as well. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the Web of Shadows is great. You know, more villain, obviously. The symbiotes are invading, but still really fun. I love that video game a lot. Probably one of the best video games involving symbiotes. Although I got to say, I did like Carnage in um, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Didn't even know he was in the game. Didn't know they did Cletus. Didn't know they did a version of Carnage. Some of you guys actually told me about it, and then I, I think I went and tracked down a copy of it for the 360, or maybe it was, P yeah, 360, I think, and checked it out. And I was like, wow, okay, that is cool. <laughs> that is cool. Um, so, yeah, and at that time, I don't think I streamed. I, don't, I didn't have the capture card yet from my friend to, to stream it. So I just played it for fun. But it was awesome. I had a, bl I had a blast uh, playing it. So, um, so, yeah, that was cool to see Carnage in, in, in the Tobey Maguire, no, I'm sorry, the Andrew Garfield universe. Um, I thought that was fun. Yeah, those are some great video games for sure that you guys listed. And like I said, if you're out there watching, list yours down below. Because now we're going to dive into uh, the last two topics. And then I want to get into something uh, that'll be real brief at the end. Uh, but next two, favorite Venom writers and favorite Venom artists. I'm just going to put these two together so we can kind of go through it. Um, for me, some of my favorite Venom writers, David Michelini. I really liked the, I ended up really liking the Costa run. I liked what he did, uh, especially by the end with First Host and that whole story made me really like it. Um, sometimes Colin Bunn, you know, I kind of liked his stuff with Remender. Um, Carl Potts from the 90s stuff. Um, I like Venom the Madness. It's a weird story, but I liked it. And the Senti wrote it. And Bruce Jones, um, uh, who did Enemy Within. That whole trade with Enemy Within, Venom the Madness, and Funeral Pyre is probably one of my favorite Venom trade paperbacks from the 90s because it collects three stories that I like on some level, on, on big levels. Um, so yeah, so those are some of my favorite writers. I'd love to hear some of yours. Uh, and my favorite uh, artists, obviously I love McFarlane. I like uh, Ron Lim. I love Mark Bagley. Ryan Stegman, great Venom artist. Uh, Ivan Coelho, I love his style as well. Um, Tom Lyle, rest in peace, big fan of his. Humberto Ramos, Paco Medina, Francisco Herrera, because I do like that Daniel Way run of Venom, even though most people don't. I do kind of like it. And I love Kelly Jones' Venom the Madness. Venom, bulked up with all those extra heads with red eyes on them, still one of my favorite splash pages and images of Venom of all time. But let's say Writers of Venom and Maximum Carnage. Okay, so that's like all the writers from the 90s stuff. So what, like Roger Stern, was he one of them? And Michelini for Amazing Spider-Man. I can't remember all the writers from that era, but okay. So you like that that era and those writers. Favorite artist, Mark says, uh, the guy who made Venom and Carnage during the early 90s. What, is, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, Mark Bagley, you mean? Um, Mark Bagley was the first one to draw Carnage, I think. Well, Eric Larson first drew Cletus Cassidy, though. And then McFarlane first drew Venom. And then Eric Larson drew Venom. So like, like those three, Mark Bagley, Todd McFarlane, and Eric Larson... Are your favorites um and then tom lyle was also an artist on maximum venom or maximum carnage sorry anyone else anyone else have any artists and like i said if you're watching this later on let yours be known down below as well yeah sorry i didn't check the names that's okay i know it's kind of throwing people on the spot i forget names too that's why i made this list of like what i was going to go over <laughs> um because i i knew in the moment i would forget my my brain does that um, andrew says i'm not good with names i actually like the art from absolute carnage Okay, so Ryan Stegman, um, but my favorite Eddie look was, I forget what it is off of, but the panel where he's wearing a Venom trench coat. 
So I, I vaguely remember that. I think it was Mark Bagley. I think it was Mark Bagley. I think, but someone can correct me on that one. We got everyone's comments about what some of their favorite artists were. Some of us knew the, the character, you know, the artist names and writers' names. Some of us don't, but that's okay. So if you know the names of the favorite artists or writers, or you don't know their names and you know what stories they wrote or drew, list them down below, and we'll keep talking down there. And so the last thing I want to talk about, because we've gone through Venom runs, Venom merch, Venom memes, costumes and cosplay. Uh, we talked about the live action films. We talked about cartoons, video games, writers and artists. But I want to know. Who is your favorite symbiote other than Venom? Um, I know a lot of you will probably pick Carnage. You know, some of you might pick Toxin. I'm really interested. Besides Venom, what other symbiote is your favorite? Now, keep in mind, I would argue maybe Anti-Venom is not a symbiote, which is why it's not my favorite. I didn't list Anti-Venom because I'm like, well, it's not really a symbiote. It, it's kind of created in a way using some of the synthetic material of a symbiote, but then mixed in with whatever Alchemex is working on. So... Yeah, not really a symbiote. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, for me, I would say Carnage and Sleeper are two of my favorite. I mean, I'm not a huge Carnage fan, but outside of Venom, yeah. I do like Scream a lot too, so I'll put Scream in there. Still iffy on the silence portion of her. You know, we'll see. We'll get more stories of her, I'm sure, at some point with Summer Symbiotes coming up. Um, but Sleeper I really love. I love the idea of someone who doesn't even have a host. I mean, he, for a while, had a dead uh you know um what was it it wasn't a scroll but it was a who are the ones that fight the scrolls why am i blanking on that i'm having such a brain fart um kree it's like a dead kree guy inside of him and then now he just has no suit he turns into a cat i really love sleeper i think that's one of my remember when costa was doing his run and i was like ah this first story wasn't great with lee price um and then it got into venom again so i'm like okay venom's back at least then they did a fun mole, the story with him and the mole people or whatever and the, the lizard people under the sewers in New York. So I'm like, okay, that's okay. That's kind of fun. And then they introduced the concept of Jessica Drew came in and she talked about, or Jessica Carpenter? No, it's Drew, Spider-Woman. Got involved and found out the symbiote was pregnant and that it was keeping the secret from Eddie. And I'm like, oh, this trope again. And I remember starting, it started to lose me. But then we got... Uh, Sleeper and then the, the uh, in First Host and the Nativity story, which wrapped up the run of Costa. And that, to me, brought the whole run full circle in a good way. So I like Sleeper, I like Carnage, and I like Scream. And like I said, Anti-Venom's not really a symbiote, but I do like Anti-Venom uh, for sure. So who are some of yours? I'd love to hear your guys' favorite uh, symbiotes outside of Venom. So Mark says Sleeper. He does have a lot of potential. You can do so much with that character not needing a host, which I think is cool and unique. He's self-sustaining, which is interesting, very interesting. Uh, personally, my favorite Venom symbiote is Mania and Sleeper, and that's about it. Mania is a good one. I actually, I'm new to Mania. I know a lot of you guys have read those books when they came out. I just read the Mania stuff while doing this show, what, like a year ago was when we talked about Agent Venom, or a year and a half ago um, when I moved to Florida. So I'm a very late bloomer to Mania, but Mania is a cool character, definitely. Um, so sweet. What else we got here? Uh, Percy, oh, sorry. Other than Venom, I'm split between Mania, mostly because of Andy, who is a great character, um, as its host, and Sleeper, especially King in Black, post-current run. I'm telling you, man, Sleeper, I, I noticed a, a lot of people um, get excited for that character. Like when I see st posts on Instagram and stuff, I'll see people going like, yay, Sleeper's in this next issue of Venom or whatever. And I'm like, that's awesome. It's so cool. That's such a, it's a newer character. And it's one that I rolled my eyes at literally when I found out it was going to exist. I'm like, oh, another offspring. And then Sleeper turned out to be, uh, turned out to be one of my favorite symbiotes. So definitely. Scorn, VCX says. VCX is really awesome concept for a cyber symbiote. Shame they didn't do anything with it. Oh yeah, Scorn. I completely forgot about Scorn. Good call. Nice deep cut there. That is five years of Venom. I mean, from your perspective and your point of view, you guys listed your favorite Venom runs, your favorite Venom merch, your favorite Venom memes, cosplays. We talked about that in costumes for a while. Our favorite elements from the live action movies and inter interpretations of Venom, um, which uh, Truth in Journalism, we didn't give a shout out to them, but that was the black and white fan film that was kind of made indie film of Venom. Shout out to that. That's actually a really cool, interesting take on Eddie where he's like, a total kind of a scumbag buys into the lies of and the business side and the, the scumminess of journalism and how it can be sometimes, um, especially investigative journalism. So 
really neat uh, short film that we didn't mention, but I'll mention here. Uh, we talked about Venom in cartoons, Venom in video games, Venom, your favorite Venom writers and uh, artists over the years. And we just talked about our favorite Venom symbiotes or favorite symbiotes other than Venom, I should say. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a blast. And that's what I wanted to do with this episode. So this is the full unedited live stream where we had a really rough start. Ace was, you know, freaking out because of his ears and everything. So that was all the way back at the beginning of this. If you missed that, uh, you can go back and watch it. But I'll leave this up as a Venom Vlog Live, as a fully unedited version. And then I'll, I'll do an edited version in the next day or two. And I'll just get down to some of the highlights. And I'll share that as a Venom Vlog episode for episode, I think, 740. Which means we only have 10 episodes left of the Venom Vlog before the season ends. So you'll probably get five episodes this month, five episodes next month. Um, and then, or five more this month, five more next month. And then, uh, and then we'll start season six in January. And uh, and then I'll I'll actually have new artwork for the channel, new things I'm going to do for the community boards. Uh, I might do some shorts, uh, plan out some shorts uh, for next year, where I just try to get more eyes on the content, try to find more Venom fans um, as we start gearing up for the third movie. Um, so yeah, we got our the script is written, we got the director now, and Tom is filming uh, Bike Riders, and I think he's got to do some reshoots for Havoc. And then if I'm not mistaken after that, it's all Venom next year. So thank you so much. Thanks for the 14 likes, the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thanks for spending two hours with me. Um, I really do. And, and spending five years with me. It's, it's been a blast uh, growing this community and, and, and meeting all of you. And we still have, you know, 260 more videos to make before we each uh, reach episode 1000 and, uh, and, and end the show. So we got a lot of content to make. So let's get to it. Thanks so much. I will see you in the future as always. Peace.